Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be talking about live images and using them to test your Linux distribution before installing Linux on your physical system. I have Manjaro, an Arch-based Linux distribution in front of me here right now and I'm currently in the live desktop environment. Basically, this is a fully running test environment that's booted from a USB that I created. I also have Zorin 16 and Ubuntu 21.04 available on the same USB that's currently running Manjaro, which I'll also tell you about how I did that later in the video, so stay tuned. So for new Linux users, the live environment here can help you save some time and find your perfect Linux distribution before you install it on your system. These live environments are often underrated and overlooked, especially by beginners on Linux. There's a reason these live environments exist, and that's really to try things out before you officially install things. So take a few moments to explore things so you can be confident that you want to install the distribution onto your computer. You always have the option in these live environments to install whatever distribution you're using. So for example, Manjaro here on the desktop says install Manjaro Linux. I just double click on that and look at that. We get the installer launched right away, which this will help us actually install this distribution on our physical hardware but that's not what we're interested in today. What's neat is that before I've installed anything, I've launched into my USB and I can use the environment here in Manjaro through the live system. I don't have to have it installed. I can explore things such as the terminal, get a feel for the desktop environment, switch between workspaces, set up certain settings, and go through the various different types of pre-installed software here in Manjaro, see if I like using the package manager and many more other things. Make sure to take a moment and smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. When you get to Zorin, as soon as you boot into the live image from your USB, you'll be greeted with a try Zorin OS and then install Zorin OS. Of course, you don't have to go through the install process right away. Click the try Zorin OS. And then once things are loaded, you'll be welcomed by the desktop in which you can go around and start using things. If you're interested in using Zorin 16, there is currently a beta version out there and I've done a review over this particular Linux distribution. Make sure to check out that video. I'll post it in the description. Again, let's talk about some of the benefits of using a live image before you actually install on your physical hardware. You can test more than one distribution before installing. As you saw earlier, I have three that I'm testing out right now before I install it, which is Manjaro, Zorin, and Ubuntu. You can explore the desktop environment. So here in Zorin, I might not be familiar with things. And you can tell across the board with these three that we have very different looking desktops. So maybe you like one more than the other. You can also see how many resources are being taken up by the system. Compare and contrast the various different live environments that you have, because this will actually represent very closely to what you'll get on your physical system. Now, one thing that might be a little slower is access times to read and writes between the USB versus an SSD or an NVMe. Of course, it's going to be a little faster whenever you have it physically installed, but we're not worried about that. Things to worry about are memory usage and CPU usage and how many packages and threads are being used and taken up by the system. You can also explore things by using the package manager. So for Zorin here, it uses aptitude. Maybe it's something you like using. Maybe you want to use a different package manager. Explore them through the terminal using the live environment. I'll just install a package like NeoFetch real quick. And look at that, I have NeoFetch now very easily. And I got to use the package manager and review that process as well. If you don't like using the package manager, explore the native software store. Each distribution has a tweaked version of the software store and various different repos that are available in these stores. So does the store meet the standards that you need? Can you get the applications that you want directly from here if you don't like using the package manager? It's all nice things to check out before actually installing Linux permanently on a physical storage space. You can also check if all of your hardware is getting recognized by the current kernel. So I'll check things like going down and making sure I can connect to a wireless or wired connection. Make sure that the sound is working in the live image environment and check out what kernel version I'm currently running. And of course, there's plenty of other things you can check out. I'm sure you can come up with a few more ideas by yourself, but that's why these live environments are so powerful and really should be used as an initial means of testing. Going over to Ubuntu, we'll hit try Ubuntu and give this one a try as well. 
But if you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and operating system videos. Here in Ubuntu, the layout is quite a bit different than Zorin or Manjaro. Mainly the dock is over here on the left hand side. We can hit show applications to look at our applications that are available on the system. Activities at the top left to access our workspaces. And on the right, we have options for sound, connection, and settings. As we can tell, the three systems that we're looking at right now in our live images are quite different and help give you a taste of how productivity is going to go on these systems. Maybe you like one workflow versus the other, but you might be asking, how do you get a live image onto a USB? so you can install and test a Linux distribution. Well, I show this process in all of my Linux installation videos, so check those out. I'll leave a playlist in the description below. It's a fairly easy process. You first find a Linux distribution that you like and download an ISO or an image file. So for an example here, I have an Ubuntu mirror in front of me with various different versions of Ubuntu. The latest and greatest is Ubuntu 21.04. So that's the one I'll check out real quick. I'm gonna hit 21.04 and I can see various different ISO files available. Of course, you can get it as a torrent as well if that makes things easier or quicker for you. But really there's two main focuses here, the server edition down below and the desktop edition, which we're checking out right now above. I would select this ISO file, which is really just a image file that's slightly compressed in order to keep all the files and contents together for whatever Linux operating system you're downloading for. But once you have this ISO downloaded, you can then use a program like Valena Etcher, Rufus, or UNET boot in to flash the downloaded ISO or image file onto a USB, CD, or DVD of your choice. At that point, all you have to do is take that USB after it's done flashing to a computer where you want to install the operating system and then boot into it by going into your BIOS, changing up your priority of what you want to boot so it boots into the USB as the very first thing. And finally, you click on live image or you get booted into the live image directly like you do here in Manjaro and start using things. People skim right past this live environment phase, but it's a great place to start before committing to a particular distribution or the Linux operating system in general. Do you know someone new to Linux? Well, share this video with them so they know about how to use live environments, how they work, and then smash that like button. Also take a few minutes to roam around and get a feel for things. Maybe you'll be happier when you figure out that the current desktop is not really the workflow that you want to use and you just don't like it. Instead of spending a bunch of time installing things, Things, you could save some time and be confident that the environment's going to work for you. For example, here, I don't necessarily like Manjaro's layout. I mean, it's very simple to use, but I feel like there's many more modern options out there that work even better with laptops. So since I install a lot of my distributions on laptops, I like to go with some of the new desktop environment offerings, especially with KDE and the GNOME 40 desktop now available. That gives better gesture support. And even for example here, I do like Zorin's more elegant, minimal layout. There's not much going on here and the aesthetics look very nice right off the bat. Now, one thing I'll mention is a live environment will not save any of your work. So if I create a test file here and I open this up and just say, hey, it's Savvy Nick here. And then I save this here on my desktop. It'll be gone after I reboot. So make sure you're not spending a bunch of time customizing things or even installing apps or packages because the next time you restart the computer or exit the live environment, things will get completely erased. This is by design because it's assumed you'll eventually use this desktop environment for installation purposes. There are actually ways to make this environment persistent. Persistence just means that the data will be saved after rebooting or exiting the live environment. I'll post a video on how to do this in the description below. And how this is done is you can create a minimal environment that exists on a USB and everything gets saved to the USB, which allows you to become more mobile, moving from computer to computer with your live environment and still having access to your files because it's persistent. Another thing I'll mention is that there's an easier way to install and test more than one distribution on a single USB. It's called Ventoy. Ventoy allows you to create one bootable disk with a bunch of install or live environments on one USB that can all be booted separately. The best part after you have things set up properly with Ventoy, you can just drag and drop a new Linux ISO or live image into a folder and boom, you're done. I have a video on how to set this up and install Ventoy on a USB. I'll post some links 
in the description below. And finally, if you want your USB back from the live bootable image setup, you'll have to take some extra steps to get it back to using the USB as a normal storage device. I'll share a video on this process as well because a lot of beginners believe they just can't access that USB for other functions after creating a bootable live disk. Well, now that you understand what live Linux environments are, how important they can be, share this video with someone else who could also use this information. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.